Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the alert notification. So welcome to lecture number four in our series, Building Competitive Intelligence. We've looked at several aspects of competitive intelligence. And if you recall, we've had a, look, a close look at some of the perennial problems, in particular, parasitic processing. And if you remember, the perennial problems are, oh, well, as, as I said, they're perennial because they're, they are present all the time. And when we looked at parasitic processing, we looked at the process whereby the tennis player can descend or constrict their thinking and become far, far less flexible and they can start a diet down the spiral or they can check out of a tennis match. And we looked at some of the cognitive processes involved when that occurs. Today, I want to look at two other aspects or two other perennial problems. That's a better way of putting it in, or putting it. The perennial problems, I mean, there are, there are a list that we are working on at the Art of Winning at the moment. And what we want to try and do is kind of establish what are the principles here? What are the dynamics? How does it function? So when I'm referring to a perennial problem, what I'm actually talking about is this situation that a tennis player will find themselves in when they're competing. And we want to be able to help the player. You'll have to forgive me because, um, as I say, this is an, this is an on, ongoing um, examination of competitive intelligence. And as I said in the introduction, it's open-ended. So we are constantly changing the way we look at or, or the way we um, construe the problem, the way we convey it to people and players. So I'm going to keep the terms as, um, as, as clear and as defined as possible for you. So we've had a look at the role a psychotechnology might play and also what technical repetition based sorry, what technical repetition-based coaching, what that cannot address, and why a strict, restricted technical approach cannot address the problems, and they, it can't really become a psychotechnology in itself. And what I've hinted at, uh, I hope quite strongly, is how two of the art of winning principles provide a framework um, to address these perennial problems. Remember the art of winning, we have, we have a set of 12 principles that we're working from at the moment that may change, that might expand, it might contract. But it's with these 12 principles, we're attempting to address the perennial problems that we face. So, in the next two lectures, what I want to do is see how that see how that process plays out with two um, perennial problems or two more perennial problems. So we've had parasitic processing. Now we're going to we're going today we're going to look at arrhythmic rhythm and its counterpart is unapprehendable margin. So that would be the next lecture, unapprehendable margin. So today we're looking at arrhythmic rhythm. We've called these particular two, um, two perennial problems, arrhythmic rhythm and unapprehendable margin, we have called these the, the fundamental challenges. And they are perennial in this case, they're, they're ever present. In, and that's in a different way to the perennial problem of parasitic processing. Because parasitic processing is, it's an ever-present threat, but it, it doesn't necessarily actually happen. 
Whereas you are constantly, hence fundamentally challenged by a rhythmic rhythm and unapprehendable margin. A, so a rhythmic rhythm and unapprehendable margin are a permanent feature of uh, every, every match that we play. And look, we do have solutions to perennial problems. That's what competitive intelligence is about. So a question might be, look, okay, Dan, why don't you just give us the solutions? And we have <laughs> people do that, so just give me, give, why don't you just give us a solution? Why are you trying to explain this, uh, how this process works? And my response to that is, I think if you understand why we are building a psychotechnology to counteract these uh, perennial problems, then you're giving yourself a much better way of, of dealing with these problems. So you're going to be much, much more flexible. So let's put that up here. If you've ever tried to spell arrhythmic, let's try it this way. I'm going to roll with that because I think that's, I, I think that's, that, that's okay. Arrhythmic rhythm. Okay, so arrhythmic rhythm is a perennial problem. Um, it's a fundamental problem um, or a fundamental challenge. So we need to kind of have a look at, at how this works. So tennis is stop and start. It's a stop, start, sport. I mean, if you remember, remember we looked at the our first principle in the art of winning, which is 70 20 10. So, again, let's bring that up here. So, one to four, five to eight, nine plus. All of these are what we are different segments um, of a rally, of a point. Um, and we know from the data that's where we're at. And here, at the Isle of Women, we call that the first strike area. That's the one to four, where 70% of points are played. And we have seen that, that despite that, <laughs> when you look at that, you would, like us, probably think there needs to be a focus on that in any tennis session or training. It should be really the focus of training. But instead what tends to happen is that tennis players and coaches will focus on this area, so the nine plus area, um, um, and 10%. And so that's the area of focus in the lesson. And we've seen how that can become problematic. And I want to look at that here when we're dealing with um, uh, with a rhythmic rhythm. Look, here's my key argument for this lecture, and, and it's and it's attempt to explain why this happens. Why does this happen when even when we know the points are short? Look, just to re-emphasize this, the mode here, so the, the most frequently occurring number, the number of shots in a rally is one. The mode is one, right? <laughs> that, that's huge. The mode is one. The reason the mode is one from the data is that the most common source of error are missed returns and tenants. So that's the that's the one. It stops there. So why is it why is it we train in this zone when we we often we don't know, but, but even when we do know here, we, we're very, very attached to here. Why is that? Let's have a look. Let's dig a bit deeper. So I think, I think we've got a deep desire for rhythm. It's, um, it's, <laughs> we've got a certain got a deep desire uh, for, for rhythm in, in tennis. So um, when we look at typical training pattern, we've got rhythmic. So we're training in a rhythmic way. And by that I mean we are doing a lot of repetition drills. 
we're, uh, we're rallying. We're either the coach is either rallying with the player or the session is kind of conducted in a rallying exchange, okay? Um, and that is what I would I'll say is more the rhythmic type session. But what tends to happen is it doesn't produce change. And so we end up doing more, more rhythm, training. So the, the way we experience not, this not actually working is to do more of this. See the problem? See that circular issue? Let's do more um, rhythmic training. There's no change anymore. Um, go back to the previous lecture on, on repetition. And, and, and we can, we can we look at that in, in more detail. That's what I think is occurring uh, when, when players are training. So we are trying to maintain this, okay? We're trying to get, his, his, here we go, big red alert here. We are trying to be rhythmic when, the, when a match here with a mode of one miss returns. Stop, start, stop, start. So we're trying to get rhythm from basically an arrhythmic situation. So we're training rhythmically in really what is a very arrhythmic sport. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Let's move back into, so let's call it AR, just, just, <laughs> just for the purposes of speed. So AR, arrhythmic rhythm. So where's the rhythm? In the arrhythmic, that's what we're trying to. That's what we're trying to find out. And this is Sterling's work, and um, it's amazing. It really is, literally, a game changer. To to use a cliche, so arrhythmic rhythm. Where do we find the rhythm in tennis? And um, we call that a cadence between the first and the second shot. So I would suggest we need to look much more closely and emphasise much more the first strike, the one to four area of the point. And I'm doing that not just because the data says so, it does say so, it does say that it's definitive in a match, this area. The reason I'm arguing for that is because this is where we find the rhythm. Between shots. So between serve, that might be the S1. Sorry, that would be the S, that's the serve. That's the S1. That's been Sterling's work over the last, ooh, uh, embarrassing, but at least it's 12, 2013. We're looking at the movement between the first and the second shot. We are almost seeing them as, what I mean is the flow between the first and the second shot. A cadence, the movement, we, we, we examine that. We also plan the first shot and the second shot. So there's a movement, cognitive movement inside the head. There's a movement on the court between the first and the second shot. This is why I think practicing the serve, you see players go, I'm practice my serve, they get fixated on ISN, individual shot making. On this first shot here, on the serve, you know, everyone comes to ask my servers problem. Never talk about the rest of my no, How many times do players come to you and say, look, I think it's my S1. It's the shot after my serve. We know very rarely in the match that the, that the serve on its own doesn't, isn't really costing the player matches, the amount of it. That's the second biggest source of error. And it's the second biggest source of error because we're so focused on serving, there's no rhythm or cadence between the first and the second shot. Um, so we've got this arrhythmic thing, we're trying to find rhythm in the serve, I mean, or within the individual shot, but not between shots. So that's where we want to um, look at that. And Sterling has a beautiful concept. In fact, we're gonna put it in green. Okay, one, two, reset. This is in a very important book, The Seven on Court Strategies. One, two, reset. See what we're doing? So we hit, hit our serve, we say one, hit our S1, two, we reset. Then we play the next two shots. Tennis is a march, 
One, two. So one, two. We set. You see what we're doing? We're, we're, we're finding the rhythm. That's what we're doing. That's what one, two reset does. So we're continually doing that in the point. And that's a great discipline to learn. Oh my God, the results though. I mean, you're doing yourself a huge favor by incorporating one, two reset. It's available in the book, going in detail, I've got videos on how to do it. But basically you're saying, you're getting your players to call out one, then two, and then reset. Gets them into a much better rhythm. So the, the um, R, oh, let's do this in red, because it's, it's the color of error. So, um, in this order, within the first four shots, biggest sources of error, by far, is the return, then it's the S1, then the R1, show the R1 being shot after the return. We'll treat the surf slightly separately. So that's, that's, that's the order. How do we create how do we go about addressing this problem? We look at rhythm and cadence between, between shots. So between R and R1, between S and S1. We know from the results that we've got that error reduction is here. It's, 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 it's studying the rhythm and cadence between these two. Um, and you see what we're developing here it's a psychotechnology. So in Sterling's constructing this, we're looking at the games, um, but also looking, and this is where we do look at the, the, the technical aspects, the movement, the movement between um, these two, first shot and second shot, and, and, and then the rehearsal, and that forms part of the technology. So. The games we play, the matches, um, first strike games, momentum games, all of them. But also, you know, why we're encouraging coaches not really to do the serve in isolation or the return in isolation, but combine it with these two because this is finding um, finding a rhythm. There's so much we can do to improve players here. That's where. That's where the action is. Let's quickly have a look at how this is developed, how we're finding rhythm. Sterling's game, he's got a, got a lovely phrase. Storyboard of play. Isn't that beautiful? The storyboard of play. What does that mean? What does that look like? Um, the storyboard and building the storyboard uh, it's, it is such a constructive process, put it that way. Um, because here we're starting to not, we're combining the movement with cognitive movement, which I argue is always the same thing, and we're starting to get a rhythm. So when we're creating the storyboard, that's what we're doing. Let's look at some of the vocabulary that we're doing. So we're also what we call um, strong problem framing. Okay, as opposed to a general or weak problem framing. So instead of saying um, serve to backhand, we're talking um, inside serve. That's on the juice side. So we're very specific um, on the juice court. Okay, on the juice court, um, inside serve, noted as that. So I'm, I'm, I'm hitting inside. Um, a lot of the players will use another term uh, down the tee. Fine. We use this one, okay, it's quicker to write that down. Then we've got um, run, reverse, and cage. Whoa, isn't that cool? Okay, all of these are inside the art of winning courses. Transform the practice court probably uh, goes into the most depth on uh, these concepts here. Uh, then we have the court A, B, C and D. So that's so the, the, the storyboard itself might look like well, uh, I hit inside serve and then uh, forehand. So this is what we get back: outside serves, backhand, and 
and so on. So we, can, we create this, um, this notation, but very quickly we're talking, you know, when you're talking with a player and they come off and it's a weak problem formulation, so they go, oh, my back end wasn't working today. Okay, fine, but when wasn't your back end working? How wasn't it working? And by use, creating a storyboard of play, we can get players to much more frame much more strongly rather than a general technical issues. So, introduction to the storyboard, something we will be coming back to, uh, creating a, like a vocabulary and a way of speaking uh, with our players. And they, they internalise this very important point. They're starting to internalise um, the coach here. Quite, quite an important, but, well, quite a fundamentally important part of building competitive intelligence. Okay, we do need to talk about ISM, because ISM, individual shot making, the mentality and approach is very arrhythmic. That is, um, that, that's, that's a real problem um, for tennis players. We call it, you know, the players, you can see when the players have gone ISM, they're focusing on the individual shot, so my surf, as opposed to, to concentrating on first and second shot, we're just focusing on here on the surf. Um, that can lead to pro problems as we see, most notably on the surf itself. Um, and when we're in the ISM mode, we look, we tend to be parasitic processing because we, we're kind of using this idea of technical adjustments to try and counter what we perceive to be the problem in a match. So it will be, oh my serve's not working, so we'll make some technical adjustments to the shot itself. And, 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 that, is the, and that is really problem problematic for the player. It, it, it does definitely stem from the practice court because we look, we'll look at individual shots there, become technically fixated. Um, so what we, what we want to do, we want, we want an AR solution, an arrhythmic solution to, to an arrhythmic problem. So how do we, how do, we do this? How do we, how, do we, how do we go about finding that rhythm? And this is not meant to be a tick-based course, so it's, there are plenty of those on YouTube. I, I'm going to give you a challenge. How do we, how do we look for uh, rhythm? We've looked at one, which is uh, one, one, two reset, and the cadence between shots one and two. But if we really want to find rhythm, I'm going to give you a challenge. If you or the player, your player is practicing the serve, for example, feed them an S1 after the serve. Play an S1. Make sure you're doing that. And do the same when you're practicing the return. Play the second shot. And this is going to this is going to improve, that's going to improve you quite dramatically, that's really going, uh, you'll notice that, so play second shot. It's my challenge for you this week, okay, go up there, so practice the serve, and then we're going to practice the S1, or we're going to practice the return, then we're going to practice the R1 and see what happens, just try it. So we have some idea of how we tackle um, a rhythmic rhythm. Um, once you reset, two shot plan with the the storyboard and play that you can start to start to um, develop both yourself um, and as, as a coach with your player, and practice movement between um, S and the, the first and the second shots. And in the next lecture, we will look at the next fundamental challenge, the next perennial problem, which is on a handleable margin. Right. Thank you for listening.